Hello. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Out of four, a tier four followers. If you ask me, we did the same way. Yes, yeah, 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 and uh, yeah, what reasons? There's a reason we there are reasons for the break we went, and one of the reasons is that we wanted to do some write ups. Uh, maybe I was trying to, to, to test my writing skills, so we did some write ups and all that. Uh, you know, we did write ups about the Islamic virgin ladies, the who who and also for other reasons we decided to go to hold on with the video so we did it and we are back thank you very much for being with us continue to share it continue to comment continue to suggest the last part of the video was the prophecies about the arabian soothsayers prophecies about the coming of the prophet muhammad and we did justice to it if you really watch the video follow it well we did justice for it the difference between ourselves and others is that we give you the books we read from the books we mention the names of the books sometimes we show you the cover of the books on the screen to let you know that we know what we are talking about so that is the term Thank you very much. Thank you with your support. Thank you with the comment. Thank you for sharing. Those of you sharing it, I love you so much. Thank you very much. I'm greeting all of you, my dearest ones. I can't mention everybody's name, but I don't forget Zukifun, wherever you are, Nageswa, and Gladys, Sister Gladys Entry, uh, Turash. Alka, all this, like, do you people are making the page to be so, so, so strong? You are sharing the knowledge. Thank you very much. Now, another point I want to make is that someone will still be wondering why is he doing this or why am I doing this? I'm doing this for two major reasons. There is other reasons, they are other reasons, but I'm doing this for two major reasons. Reason number one, I said things, I did a presentation, I mentioned things, and I was insulted. My father, who is a dead man, who is late, was insulted. My mom was insulted. My entire family was insulted. Only for one reason. And the reason was that I was lying. And I said, if that is the case, I will prove to the world that I wasn't lying. It was not a lie. That's a fact. This is the reason number one. Reason number two. I don't think as a Muslim you would like to base your belief on lies. It appears to me that defending a religion can only be done by lies. Yes. It has appeared to me. You might not go because you haven't experienced it. You haven't seen anything about that. But I have seen it. I have experienced it. It appears to me, it seems to me, in fact, it is true that defending religion can only be done by lies. You lie to defend a religion. Well, why do you want to base your belief on lies as a Muslim? If you really know what you are doing and you claim your Quran says Ikra, read. Do you read lies? Do you believe, do you want to base your religion on reading lies? So it appears to me that religion can be defended with lies. So we want to turn the other side of the coin so that you can take those things out. If you still want to be the religious person you want to be, take the lies out. When you take the lies out, life will be much more better and easier for you. So this is why we are doing it. And this is the particular reason why we said when the realities of life are uncovered, change is a must. Thanks for watching.
Thanks for sharing. Thanks for commenting. Thanks for suggesting. Now, listen to me as I make the other, the next point I want to make. This is another issue. The issue is that <laughs> we are privileged to grow up under the shadow of Islam. You know, when we did the last video of the soothsayers of Arabian Peninsula prophesizing the coming of Prophet Muhammad, yeah, yeah, in the last video, then I catch me who say, next video will be one of the Prophet Muhammad now was and in the surroundings. It is a better day to know. Send a year one, and you may be a better one, and on a year back, I can was it. That is what we want to talk about. The uh, the religion is what we grew up in. We grew up under the shadow of Islamic religion. We are privileged to be with almost all the Islamic sects that are found in Ghana. We are privileged to be with some of them. Some of them are even our scholars, our teachers. We are taught by Sunnis. We are taught by Shias. We are taught by Tijaniyas. We grow up with these people. And our journey has been with these people all, all entire, our entire life. Me personally, I grew up in the house where my dad is a Sufi and a Sufi order that my dad belongs to is a Tijaniya Sufi order. We will discuss the set Sufis. Tijaniya Sufi order. And I believe if you are in Ghana, you know there's a group of Muslims known as Tijaniyas. The common Islamic group in Ghana, the common one, is the Ahlu Sunnah Wali Jama, which has so many names in various countries. Some places, the Ahlu Sunnah Wali Jama are called Izala. In some places, that is when you go to northern Nigeria, they are called Izala. Some part in Nigeria to some people, they are called Salafis. Some of their name is Wahhabis. All these names are referring to Al Sunnah Wal Jamaa with a slight difference. We've been with them, we've learned with them, we stayed with them, we've seen tons. When I was in Kumasi Stadium, we were sacked from staying in a particular Sunni mosque because we have been going to another Sunni mosque to pray Friday prayers. One who says, sound this strange man. Me wo kuma se na mi sun ya diya. Na ye ti shunni mosk ba kum. Me pe se mo bo di. Ye be du ho. Ye ti alu sunna mosk ba kum. E kwa na ye te. E kwa na ye da. E fi ye e dan wo ho. Students from various places of the country. E kwa na ye te. E kwa na na ye da. But because of activities, ye su ni makaranta po. Na mi se. Me Islamic school and the boy, because schools menu Islamic schools menu ever commerce. Forget about the secular education aspect, but Islamic schools menu and the boy, because school and the friend who answer is Sunnah. Now, when you hear the name, you can know it is a Sunnah inclined school for three years, GHS level, what is known as Motawasifa or Idabia, and far as Sunnah and Abiyaya. That is where I went for my GHS Islamic study, Arabic studies. Three years. Uhuya, no one who Arab for our everything, like Arabs, especially. Yemuwa yeye koko kakram. Yeshaja labia. We don't wear anything. Yeshaja labia, the white long gown. And una yeshe. Preferably, udi eche bekamu. And yet, you know, we have different kind of art. 
ye wo Nigeria fo e che no tin 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 no kakara kan ye wo no ye mu e na ye wo Arab fo che fita no preferable no na wo be she wo be she the labia white the white long gun you look like a roman father na wa she e che that dress was irritating but actually me i don't have problem with the dress i used to wear it but a chemo i can hold sometimes i have a problem because me nya a chair committee not that my head is big but because i love to keep my hair until i keep on changing the a chair i keep on changing the hat so lately like finally my guy a chemi shirt na nye ye hi e wo akabia nu mu ansaru sum na dress in those days me nim so mo asisa dress wo mo nsisa yo I'm telling you where I'm coming from, so that you should know when I'm saying those things. I'm not joking, bro. I'm not joking. Ni aye hi awa sa dress numu ni se ye she jalabi ani eche na ye di kambu apeso unim kambu enye shoe kambu enye cross sandals enye slippers amam fuo she jalabi ani eche eni kambu nihu anama nihu mete. And no, no, yes, sir. Obana, yes, in a sambo, moa. That just a masha law. Masha law. Yeah, you're moving if war. The dress identify your faith. This is religion. Dress identify your faith, not your humanity. In some moon, you're dibida. So that is it. Jalabia, a chair, any kambu. Yamban, yamban, so she black, black. Man also she black black. And omu she ninja. Omu kata omi ni so. It is totally Arabization. Omu a dani yen Arab fuo. Omu a dani yen Arab fuo. Na mi di. Omu se si se nu ye local name. There was a little problem with it. Pure Arabic name. Yem ba omu she tum. Black black. And omu kata omu ni. Nti. And you mix man who are building, and I'm bare man who are building. You see, you uncover the bare man who must care what school you mean. Etch, bare man department, no name bare department in him. Unim na uye mistake na uko fam bare man who are ni aye di bare uko aye karam me uhu oba me bare oba aye karam. And the, this is how we, we grew up. This is where we left. Man on form bear mana or what you remember. Bana Bielo or bar on a classroom or in a gate. Now, now you be a gate in the Kakra, not on my lectures. So, not on Bamuti or inside because all your bear man just won't be a power and a And he said, You're true as I'm so we are. I'm going to say. Uda muta wasita amba Islamic churches one amba any Islamic churches one be my chua always be amba no dey be be man e ni amba ni passi si be man you know why invigilate some be man no ngura amba no go invigilate o until o mu copy sa e ya haram so be she jeans by ya haram so be copy we exam so this is the religious lies fake life of religion. Copy, eh, yeah. Copy, dear, eh, yeah, halal. Eh, yeah, permissible to copy. They copy because nobody goes there to invigilate them. This is the schools I went. From there to Nuria Islamic School. Nuria Islamic School welcomes everybody. That is where we got to meet so many different kind of scholars. And you see, I hear what more. I remember there is one with two Mustafa from Iraq. He's an Arab from Iraq. Or yeah, she and he. There is Ustaz Hamza, who is a uh, Egyptian, and there is uh, uh, Ustaz Abdullah Aristu, one of my favorite teachers. I don't know what logic and philosophy, minimantic and falsafa. One of my favorite teachers. We have all kind of people, but still yet they classify the Makaranta or the school or as Nuria Islamic School as yet Sunni school. So we've been with these people. This is my journey of learning. My, even though I grew out of Tijan Sufi of Ada, 
my dad do not force any of us to be one. That is why when you come to our house right now, we have a Sunni. We have who that not belongs to anything. He just walking. And we have those that are saying bye-bye to religion. My dad did not force anybody. I remember. I quite remember. He told me that let your knowledge lead you to where you will be. Not what other people will say. Me kai sa me papa kata se mu e chire ni. Efi a mi ni wo mu mu e tijani efi. Until now, when I was growing up, I wasn't strong tijani ya baby. I wasn't strong tijani ya. So I went to Sunni school, learned, came back, and then I came back to join my roots, which is the tijani ya, the Sufi order, the tijani ya Sufi order. In Islam, I came to join, went through the training, the initiation, as come third year, I went through it, passed out, whatever is there, we've seen it, we've heard it, came out, put some people on the training, trained them, took some people through the Askaru third year, trained them, before I became what I am today. You think I don't know what I'm talking about? I grew under the shadow of Islam. Yes. Do you know what it takes for one to go through Askaru Terbiya in Tarika? The Shew or the spiritual master who gave me, who took me through the initiation and the training is almost 90 plus years. When he, when he, and he has been doing it for his entire life. So we know what we are talking about. So growing up with these people, I became closer. So Sunni, I had experience. Tijaniya, Sufi order, I had experience. Nuria Islamic School is a school of versatile. You learn everything. That is where you learn Adiyan, religions. You learn the sect. We learn about Shias, Ahmadiyas, Kadiyaniya. We read all those things. We have the books. We were taught Shias. And we are privileged to have Shias in our community. Some of our brothers are Shias. Imam Idris Duma, I greet you. These guys are, this guy is a Shia, he's a brother. He's one of the sh strong Shias in our Ashaman community here. Imam Salis, the Imam of Zemu, I greet you. Nageswa, Imam. He's a Shia. We are with them. We've been with them. We have friends. Student of Shia schools, we work together, we read. We are in each other, so we know what we are talking about. So, as we promise you that it is the birth and the date of birth of Prophet Muhammad, that is coming. That is why I'm telling you all the stories. Listen and listen. According to each Islamic sect, there is a different ideology, different opinion, different school of thought about the date of birth of Prophet Muhammad. If you do not know, today I'm going to tell you. Get ready. Knowledge is about to flow. Two strongest opposition sects in Islam about the date of the date of the birth of Prophet Muhammad is the Tijani Sufi of, of order and the Sunni Sufi of order. When it comes to the Sunni set, there's a problem in terms of defining who a Sunni is. Because of two major terms. There's a doctrinal Sunni. There's a Sunni based on doctrine and there's a, su a political sunni these two major terms are very important for you to know they are very important so the your doctrine doctrinal sunna your one sunna based on doctrine and now your political sunni now when it comes to political sunni 
All the Sufi orders are Sunnis. What is the basic argument of the political Sunni? The basic argument or what makes one a political Sunni is this. Whoever believes in the leadership of the four caliphs after Prophet Muhammad and also accept Abu Bakr as the first nominated caliph followed by Umar, followed by Uthman, followed by Ali is known as a Sunni. This is a political Sunni. So in this angle, all the Sufi orders of the world are Sunnis, including the Tijaniyas in Ghana here and Tijaniyas of every world. When are you political Sunni for? Political Sunni for Omu no Omu ye niya Omu ji kalifu ena enu tu mu Ena enye so Omu ji tu mu keke se Omu mu Omu Omu ena enu obi si obi No with the arrangement With the chronological arrangement of the caliph order Nti Abu Bakar first Umar second Uthman third Imam Ali third is fourth Obi biara awo ji sa system we tu mu no Onu no ye political sunni. In this point no. Tari kani sufi ni biya. Oye sunna. But sunni as a doctrine. The one abiding by sunna by doctrine is different than. Oye different from we. Omu no omu o problem with so many things. Everybody is not a good muslim. Except omu kwa. Everybody. It's not a good Muslim, except on Mkwa. Everybody will go to hell, except on Mkwa, until you follow them. That is Sunnis by doctrine. And clearly, Sunnis by doctrine. Omuno Omuka say, Adia Bia Prophet, I am Oya, why a bida? Bida announced you over for hell. Yes, so this is the thing. Now there's a two opposition when it comes to the Maulidi of Prophet Muhammad. Maulidi is the word given to the birth of Prophet Muhammad in Islamic Arabic term. This word Maulidi has two major meanings. Maulidi as a place of birth and Maulidi as a time of birth. Because the meme is master, you call it master libibi. The meme ha, is meme zaman wa meme makar. The meme of a time period and the meme of a place or a space. Meme of time and meme of a space. For instance, when you say maka maulidi rasul, the maulidi here means place of birth. So Makkah is a place of birth of Rasul. But when you say Yomuli it name Maulidi Rasul, this is about time. So you are saying Monday was or Monday was the day of the birth of Prophet. So Maulid has two major meanings. Maulid as a place of birth, Maulid as a time of birth. The colliding confusion. Is between the doctrinal Sunnis and the Tijanis, the Sufis, and including Shias, because Shias are more closer than Tijanis. And in fact, this Shia sect are closer to Tijanis for a reason. Most of the youth in Shia today are coming from Tijania. The Shias are closer to Tijaniyas and they are making the Tijaniya youth Shias. This is a different topic. Tijaniya youth is an easy job to convince a Tijaniya youth into Shia. It's an easy job. But to convince a Sunni, in fact, <coughs> excuse me, a Sunni that is imbibing with doctrine, Sunnah doctrine, 
to convince him to share it's not an easy task they are stagnant rigid intolerant this threatens the sunnis with doctrine these are their three characteristics major characteristics rigid stagnant and intolerant yes this threatens sunnah by doctrine don't joke oh. but the tijaniya youth can be easily convinced to shia not sunni so the confusion is between the sunnis with their stagnant doctrine doctrine and the tijaniyas and the other sect which are shias the sufis and shias and this has been emotional argument for so long someone like me who studied in the sunni school maybe liberal sunna school and rigid or uh, fanatic sunna school and saru sunna and nuria islamic school have idea of all this and coming to be permanent in tijaniya sufi of order sufi order who also have idea about this according to the rigid sunnis according to the fanatics of sunnah celebrating the maulid of prophet muhammad is bid'ah is haram it's a sin to celebrate the birth of the founder of islam the prophet of islam is a sin when you are a muslim you are in trouble sectarian problem alone can give you heart attack sectarian problem in islam alone can give you bp in chichemu awa islam sumu ku abema o bp in chichemu awa islam sumu ku abema wa akumayari na se wonnim na we tijani ani ana we ya shi ani na sunna fo be pie wo mbro no so so mu be ya wazi ya eda no wanya bp ya wonya bp biom nsemo mba to trouble so there is no proper muslim in ghana tmie no proper muslim in ghana because according to the fanatic sunnah muslim tijaniyas are not muslims shias are not muslims ahmadiyas are not muslims nakshabandiyas are not muslims Ibadiyas are not Muslims. Zaidiyas are not Muslims. Any other Islamic sect other than the sect of fanatic Sunnah are not Muslims. And vice versa. According to the other sects, the Sunni sects are also not Muslims. So there is no Muslim in Ghana. In fact, there is no Muslim in the world. all the muslims themselves are pointing fingers to each other so forget it you are not a good muslim in the eye of the other muslim so stop threatening us with your religion because one kasa kasa wo so no question mark na wo it may find intimidate here to other muslims who are muslim papa so celebrating the birthday of prophet muhammad alone can take you to hell according to fanatic Mus muslims fanatic sunnis it has been said all the time why so now this is the rhythm of the birth of prophet muhammad that we are about to drop for you dear followers and listeners first of all prophet muhammad is a shadow figure there is no authentic and accurate historical background of prophet muhammad this will be proven from the islamic books 
the Muslim writers themselves. But let us look at certain aspects before we get to the Islamic books. Let us look at the certain aspects. First of all, it is said that he was born in the era of Anushawan. Anushawan is a nickname of a strong, famous, and popular Persian king, modern day era, Anushawan. His real name is Khusro. The English name is Khosros. And the nickname is Anusharwan. Anusharwan in their language means the immortal soul. Anyway, the man is said to be immortal, but the man is dead. I don't know what they meant by immortal soul. Okay, immortal soul, they did not say immortal body. So immortal soul. The body is dead, but the soul is there. Maybe he has reincarnated already, I don't know. Who knows, maybe I'm the one. That's just by the way. He was said to be born, Prophet Muhammad, the founder of Islam, was said to be born in the year of Anusharwan. In the year of Anusharwan, there was an invention in Mecca. Some Arabs invited Anusharwan armies to come and drive out the Abyssinians. One of the reasons for the Arabs to invite Anushawan armies to come and drive away Abyssinians out of Mecca is the fact that the Abyssinians are blacks ruling the Arabs. So the Arabs didn't want it. They are not strong. I be before Abyssinian for a ruling Arab for that. And I'm going to invite Abu Sharwan, the army, to buy. He and I, Abu Sharwan, the army buy. No, say he and I. Emma, the same time now, Abu Sharwan already in the reigning period of Abu Sharwan that it was said that Prophet Muhammad was born. If indeed it is true that Prophet Muhammad was born in the here in the reigning time of Anusharwan, then the arm will feel the year of the elephant that Muslims are talking about. That it is the year of elephant that Prophet Muhammad was born is not true. It is crashing. It is conniving. A boshia. Because Anusharwan armies came when Abyssinian armies left Arabian Peninsula until Sesadia, Prophet Muhammad was not born in Abyssin in the year of elephant. The problem with Islamic Sira books is that when it comes to dates, Omunyadiye, Omudeti Yabasabasabi, the dating system of Islamic Sira books, in fact, is so terrible. It's so, so terrible that you not even love to mention it. So Anusharwan's era cannot be able fail. So here alone, there's a problem. Because Anusharwan came to Mecca after Abyssinians has left. So it was a year Later, it was early, it was earlier than the date of the Amun field because the date of the Amun field commonly known the elephant, the year of the elephant is known as AB 571. So let's say from AD 570 to AD 571. Is the, is the year of the elephant. And Prophet Muhammad, the founder of Islam, is said to be born in this year. Meanwhile, meanwhile, Anusharwan Amis entered Arabian Peninsula in the year 
A D five six zero or five six one to five six five and drive out the Abyssinians. So how come the Abyssinians came back to Arabia Peninsula to stay up to the year AD 571 and fa But we don't want to worry you too much about this because this is history from the other angle. We will take you to the history of the Islamic authors themselves. Thanks for watching. Share, comment, suggest. I love you too much. We'll meet again. Bye-bye.